Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. My name is Anton Monson. You probably know that because you're subscribed to this channel. As you know, I really do like to do some 3D modeling. So I thought that this gift that I was giving a shayer, um, I want to make some sort of stand for it because it didn't come with the package. But there is some complicated shapes here that I want to get into Fusion 360. And I want to do that without having to buy an expensive 3D scanner or something like that because I know we don't, not everyone have, have one. So I thought that, hmm, how can we translate these curves into um, the 3D software and get some sort of accuracy? So I'm going to show you one way, or it's actually like two ways, uh, to use paper and pencils and a ruler to, to get this to work. Again, these are radiuses, you can measure them in different types of ways. There are tools, uh, if you have them, that can help out a little bit. I'll link some down below. But we need to do some figuring and we can't just photograph it because the perspective will change everything. There are no shortcuts here and that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. So let's get going with a piece of paper and we'll see how we can take out these measurements. So for this we're gonna need some paper. The, the thicker the better. We're gonna need what we need to draw with. A knife, a scissor and a pencil. So it's quite simple. The first thing that you can do to get some sort of representation is more or less just to try to sketch the shape here. Now it's very difficult to be correct. So what do we see here? We see uh, some sort of measurements. We can probably draw in the center. I'm just doing this by hand now. We'll do that in CAD later. But we get a shape that we could follow. The problem is that this shape is only down here. We need to have something a little bit further up as well. And that's where the tricky parts come in. So let's start off by cutting this away. And we'll call this uh, lower. And for the next part, we also want to cut away a little piece. Something like that. Actually, even, even smaller. Because what we want to do is that we keep everything parallel. So I measured before on the, the flat bottom at this side. So I need to push this down here. And we want to measure more or less parallel. And we're actually going to start to cut into this, uh, this piece. So I'm just going to start with some standard, like maybe like so. Cut that out. Ooh, I need to probably need a new blade on this one. And the goal here is to start to draw out the kind of shape that we need to do. So I, I can see that I need to go in a little bit on all sides. And again, we are doing it rough. So right now I'm just checking this radius. That was a little bit too much. You can probably see the gap. So I need a little bit more up here. That is starting to follow the shape nicely. And then we need to cut off some up here. You can still see that we are way off. Here you can see that we are getting closer, but it's still far off. Especially when you try to do it parallel. Now that's good. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Uh, another paper so we see a line easier. I'm just transferring this over here. And you can see that it, they are looking pretty similar. So we could probably just have used the bigger one. But you see there is a small difference in, in width and shape. So uh, that's it. Now we have these and we could photograph them right here because we have our cutting board. But the best way to do this is to use a regular paper scanner. And maybe, if possible, use some sort of reference for size. So I'm going to add a ruler. Because it's not always clear if your scanner is using real-world measurements or not. But anyways, here you can see the final measurements. So lower, and this is top. And we'll try to get those into Fusion 360 using a scanner and then converting them into lines. So if you don't have a paper scanner, um, which is kind of normal in today's society, you can always use Google Drive and then you'll just click new and you can use this scan button. And we want to make sure that we have a ruler in so we can see any data. And the idea here is that we just take a picture and it will try to organize that into uh, a, a straight picture. So it, it kind of bends everything to make it work a little bit better. Okay, so let's go into the scanner here. I'm using some sort of Shipu scanner. Make sure that we put the ruler on the right side so it's facing down. Uh, well, I have some background here on my picture that wasn't supposed to be. But we'll add the pictures around there. Close the lid. I have to use some sort of app here, so I'll click scan. That's gonna happen. 
Hey, look at that. Looks pretty cool. Let's save that. So let's just make one more scan uh, without the lid because I think that looks cool and I think that we can get a better contrast. Let's make sure that we have, yeah, DP, black and white, super. Let's scan it again and let's get my fingers in here because that's cool. Hey, hey, look at that. <laughs> no, but seriously, it looks a little bit better with the contrast here. So uh, we're gonna save this one here as well. And then let's send them over to the computer and see what we can do. Okay, so we're now in the computer. We have uploaded the pictures. I wanna get started into Illustrator because the first step that we need to do is to create a new document. So let's head in and let's get going. So we're gonna create a new uh, document, a A4, and we're gonna use some settings here. Uh, raster effect 300 ppi remember that was what we created in the uh, in the scanner so we want to keep that let's do that and if we just drag in the picture that we scanned whoa you can see that it's just way too big for the document maybe you're wondering why and that is because of the scaling so it shows that pictures of 72 dpi so we need to scale, you can see it up here in that corner. So we need to scale that and I'm just going to go to object transform, scale and to get it to 24 ppi to 300 ppi, that's 24% of the scale. And I want it to be in the middle. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll, we'll just have to do that ourselves. Anyways, it's in the same scale now. So now we have our two shapes that we can work with. We can actually do some sort of image trace. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're actually going to try to draw it ourselves. So let's start it from the bottom. Again, these lines weren't really accurate. So I'm just going to drag my own sketch lines here. Create something like uh, that's similar to what we had. Cool. There we have one of the shapes. So this is one of the shapes, let's export that one. Export selection. SVG, lower, that's what we're gonna call it. Like so, cool. And then we'll create the other one. So we'll create a new line. We'll try to follow this the best we can. Maybe something like that. And with this one, we need to continue. And there we have the other one. So let's for export that selection as well. Upper. There we go. Let's go into Fusion 360 and continue. Okay, so here in Fusion, what we need to do is to import the SVGs. Let's begin with the lower one, put it on there. That looks awesome. Let's repeat this and let's get the upper one. And I'm actually gonna flip this in that direction so we get them more or less at the same location. Uh, cool. So now we have two sketches. We might need to, uh, ooh, that's right, I want to have them in two separate sketches. So let's create a new sketch on the same place, but, and then import the SVG again. Burr. Flip it around, flip it around. Cool, because then we can start to uh, move the sketch. I want to unfix that. Then I can start to move it around. There we go. And we want to start to get things parallel to each other. Yeah, something like that. Now again, I'm pretty sure that we had everything go up a little bit. Again, one of the big measurements that we haven't done yet is to measure the width of it. So we know the width down there and the width up here. So we can make sure that we create everything equally or parallel or whatever it's called. <laughs> cool. So um, that's going to be my angle. And we also need to measure the width at the bottom. 
and that is 29 millimeters yep 29 and we have at the bigger part we measured 35 and we have a height difference of around 49 we can see I created the width here of the both blades or the both intersections now this one here I think I need to uh, move a little bit should be out and it should be a little more rounded like so and it should go out to that part so uh, let's keep it in here but also let's move it a little bit forward as well because the whole shape as you can see is moving forward this means that we can start to clean up the edges a little bit like so maybe this one should go in a little bit more so I want to trim off the outsides and now we have the two shapes and what we could do is to just roughly double check the angle and it's just way off we need to move the top sketch which is this one we need to move all of it and I'm, I mean, again, I'm just eyeballing. But we need to move this forward. Let's get this up. Around there. That's, that's probably gonna be good. Okay, so now we have those. What we need to do is, of course, to mirror everything. To be honest, I do wanna remove these two. So you wanna go into this sketch, edit sketch. I want to mirror all of those parts on wait for it this is again one of the tools that i hate the most in fusion is how we uh, need to create a line for the mirroring so there we go stop that sketch go into and edit this sketch let's do the same just remove those lines we need to create one for the mirror and we'll select all of these mirror mirror line this one awesome now what we could do is to, I'm going to create a loft with the freeform tools, sculpting environments. I'm going to start with the profiles down below. Just hold down control and click all of the, these ones. Then we are creating a new profile for the top. And let's do the same. So there we go. Now we get the profile. Let's click OK. We have a form. Oh. We need to uh, stitch all of these bodies, of course. Let's go to the patch. Stitch these. Awesome. And also flip them around because they are in the wrong direction. Cool. And we now have a body that we can mirror. Select this one here now we can stitch those two and we can create a cap or something like like so and we'll reverse those two as well and finally we'll stitch everything so that we get we'll stitch these three so that we get one solid body Whew. Took a lot longer than I wanted it to, but there we go. There we have the basic shape ready. I know, a lot of messing to do one tool, but this is a great way to do um, to get the measurements in. And from here, we can use this. We'll call this our uh, Philips body. And we can create a completely new shape. Let, let's go with, a, again, free forms are cool, so let's go into the model environment let's create a new form let's create a uh, a, a box the boxes are cool <laughs> on the middle something like that let's create a symmetry on uh, width so like this and let's get cracking so first of all i like to display this as a joint box 
and I want to have a crease on the bottom like so and these ones here we need to uh, or need need I want to create something going upwards here I don't know entirely what I'm doing but I'm trying to make some sort of cool shape or okay finish four there we go let's do the old classic boolean operation here so let's click combine tools to cut is this one and we're done <laughs> okay, also because I like it you know you can add a little bit of a sh no we cannot Pretty sure I can add a chamfer here. Pretty sure. One millimeter? Yes. We can do that. Maybe a little bit less. 0.5. Oh yes, that looks cool. So with that done, I think we are ready to just inspect this a little bit. I want to make sure that we have a, uh, uh, a regular thickness around the whole model. So these parts here, I just want to make sure that we we got some some mass in there so that should be fine now again we are angling it so maybe 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 we'll just go back here and edit this one here because it will stand on its own and because it's angling we want to have some sort of material support down there so let's do it like so and i think that we need to inspect it again just to make sure that we have a good it's a little bit... Nah, it's not thin at all. That's gonna work super nice. Cool! Hopefully that all works. Let's make some control measurements. Let's measure that point to uh, this one. That is 35.8. Yeah, that's super. We got some margin at all. Nice! Let's print it. Okay, so there we have it. It looks cool. I printed it really fast, so uh, the finish isn't the best, because I want to make sure that we get a good fit before we make a really nice looking one. Maybe some that I can hang on a shelf or something like that as well. It's not the point here, the point is just to get a, well, it's not quick, but it's a, it, it's a way to get the shapes around the radius. Now, let's just try it and see if it works. Let's see, it's gonna be this way. Hey, we got, it. oh, it's not really, Ah, yeah, I cracked it when I uh, removed it. So it's a little bit of uneven on the downside, but uh, yeah, it works. Now the next model will probably be to do it. Uh, ooh, yeah, it's a little bit tight. So I guess that uh, that could be done in a second version. <laughs> but again, there are much better tools. You can check them down in the link down below. I will use those before using this technology, but you can have one of these profile ga uh, gauges, I think it's called. Uh, you can also transfer that line to the papers and do the same procedure, which is probably a better way than to, to cutting it out. But if you don't have a profile gauge, this is a way to, to, uh, to do it. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something or found it amusing. And make sure you check out the other videos. There's a ton of them linked down below and at the sides, I suppose. And um, yeah, with that said, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.